All right, so I'm willing to admit I've made a blunder here. I did a video called R50 What, where I talked about the Mini Cooper chassis codes, and for some strange reason, I forgot the new Mini Convertible. I forgot the F57. What the heck was I thinking? So, today I'm going to give you an F57 video. So, right behind me, including the car I am sitting on, I have a John Cooper Works convertible, I have a Cooper S convertible, and over there I have a Cooper convertible. So we're going to go through all three cars because that's just the kind of guy I am. So um, let's get to it. All right then, so I'm out here at my favorite place to be, naturally the mini dealership, and we're going to start off with the Cooper convertible. So. This is a 2020 Mini Cooper convertible in pepper white, leatherette interior. This is the standard bucket seats. Now, if you notice, I have them all in various stages of top down. So this is an F57 Cooper. And as you can see, leatherette seats, the mini connected system right there, seven speed dual clutch transmission. Pretty nice little car. Here's something you all might remember from a previous video. When you want to get large objects in your car, you see here it says easy load. Flip this up, flip this up, lift up, pull handle down, and there you go. And you can now fit large objects in your car. And of course, flip up this shelf here. So that's pretty cool. And under the bonnet, we have a 1.5 liter, three cylinder turbocharged motor, putting out 134 horsepower, 162 foot pounds of torque. I did find out recently that in overboost, it puts out 168. Now, if we pop the cover off here, because this is always interesting to me, you can see the modular design of the engines. This is the upper engine mount right here. Look at this big thing. So this is where cylinder four would go if you had the four cylinder engine. So this all would shift over. Another four, another cylinder would be here. So this is a modular engine bay. So they designed this to fit in here like that. So this is a three cylinder, nice and compact. And then the four cylinder has another piston. Now, another thing I noticed with the 2020 models is the fact that they redesigned the engine shroud. Apparently they changed up some of the details. It used to have the mini logo wing logo on it. Now it just says mini on it. But this one's nicely equipped, actually. It has the LED headlights, the Victory Spoke wheels in black. All in all, it's a very, very sharp little car. I really like it. And if you want to just cruise around in the sun, this would be the perfect little car because it doesn't use that much gas. It gets like 34 MPG, so you could just cruise around in this and have fun drive in the sun, enjoy your day, whatever you want. So this is the F57 Cooper convertible. Now let's turn our attentions to the F57 Cooper S convertible. 189 horsepower, 206, 207 foot pounds of torque. There is an overboost. I think it puts it up to 228 foot pounds of torque, I think, give or take really nice this one's also in pepper white as you can see there's a lot of pepper white convertibles here with the chesterfield leather satellite gray interior the light up dash which i really really like and touchscreen navigation seven speed dual clutch transmission very cool and it's currently in sunroof mode so the sunroof is popped open like this and of course the windows roll down, chrome gas cap. Very, very nice, very nice. And under the bonnet, we can see that lovely engine. And there it is. Now, I've been popping these covers off for you guys because apparently this is something that intrigues you all. So, there's the fourth cylinder. 
and there it is. So this is basically sawed off in that other car and there's three cylinders. So that's kind of cool to see that. So that's what it looks like. This is the B46 engine. Now, for those of you who don't know, in 2014, when the Mini first came out, they used the B48 189 horsepower engine. 2015, they decided to switch it to the B46. Same thing with this car. This had the B38 when it first came out, the Cooper, and then they switched it over to the B36. So, as such, these are different engines from the other car over here, the John Cooper Works, which is the B48 engine. So we'll get to that car shortly. But cool thing, if you want to tune these cars, you can put Dynan tunes on this. You can do all sorts of tuning upgrades. You can sort of tune this one, but it might throw a check engine light here or there. The, because these cars are turbocharged, you can do intakes, you can do downpipes, you can do intercoolers, you can do all this cool stuff. Now that we've gotten to these cars, we're going to head to the best one of all, the John Cooper Works convertible. So this one's in Caribbean Aqua. Really pretty. This has the Dynamica interior. Yes, I said it correctly, Dynamica. Apparently I've been saying it wrong this whole time and I don't remember who told me that. I thought it was the sales manager. I really think it was a friend of mine who currently works in the service department who was a sales associate here at one point. He might have called it Dynamica and I just kept along with it. But no, it's actually Dynamica, so sorry. I owe you all an apology, but pretty nice interior. This is one of my favorites. Really, really nice. This has Harman Kardon as well. I like Harman Kardon. This doesn't have the touchscreen navigation though, which is kind of funny. That one does. This one doesn't, but this one's the more powerful one. This has the eight speed automatic. This is the only transmission available for the John Cooper Works convertible now, but it makes up for it under the bonnet with a 228 horsepower, 236 foot pounds of torque B48 engine. Nice little four cylinder here. Pop the cover off again. There you go. So very different engine. Though it would be kind of cool to see a little comparison here. So I think the hood's still open on this one. It is not. Let's pop this again. For those of you who don't know, when you open the hood on the new minis, you do a double pull. So, same cover. Let's pop the shroud again. All right, so that's the B48, and this is the B46. So, I don't see anything too different. Let's go over here and look. I really don't see anything different. Huh. I don't think there is anything different between these two cars for some reason. Maybe it's just tuning. Or maybe it's internals. I'm sure it probably has a bigger turbo. Huh. Interesting. Either way, I'd probably go with the JCW anyway just because I like them. But, that's interesting. So, I'm going to put the cover back on. And this one you can also modify to your heart's content. If you want to get 300 horsepower out of this, you can do it. But this one has the 18 inch, I think these are the cup spoke wheels. Very, very nice. Blackout trim on the exterior, the piano black gas cap, headlight rings, taillight rings. Same trunk space. Very, very nice. I love the JCW seats. And I mean, I love the JCW seats. These are so comfortable. I mean, I can't, they're just very, very comfortable. Ah, I'll just sit out here 
and suntan all day long. What do you think? Kind of fun? Yeah. This is just a nice relaxing car. I would drive this car, even if it is a convertible, and I'm not usually a fan of convertibles, but I'd drive it. I kind of wish the Caribbean Aqua came on the other models, though. That'd be kind of cool. But they're all really well equipped. I think this one's about 40 grand. I think it's actually 42. 42,000. Not bad. I'd do it. But all three of these cars have automatic climate control. All three of them have LED headlights. All three of them have the, have the Union flag taillights. All three of them are great little cars, but one has 134 horsepower, one has 189 horsepower, and one has 228 horsepower. Now, this one, the JCW has the eight-speed automatic. I heard rumors that they might be making all of the John Cooper Works models in 2020 for the 2021 model year, 300 horsepower. They might. I don't think they are, but you never know. They could do something crazy like that. I almost, I'm almost concerned that might um, downplay the the excitement for the GP3, but I hope it doesn't. But I can imagine that if they're going to do 300 horsepower on all of them, that that will be only for the automatic transmission ones because you know how Mini is with their automatics and the higher horsepower. So that might be the case with these cars. I think they'll probably still use the 228 for the manual ones. For that matter, I think they might actually increase the horsepower slightly for the manual ones if they do this. I don't think they're going to do this, but if they do it, I think that's what's going to happen. In the meantime, we got these nice automatic transmission JCWs. They're pretty cool. I've driven them enough to actually kind of like them. I still prefer a manual. I'd still buy a manual, but they're going to do the same thing with the Cooper and Cooper S. You'll have a manual gearbox for those two as well. But I love how each of these is different. It's just really kind of cool to see all of them differently set up. And Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like below. Don't forget to comment. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. And as always, before I let you all go, I'm just going to remind you all that life is too short to drive a boring car. So drive a Mini. I'll catch you all later.